Hi, how are you? I'm Kim and I am going to be doing some hot chocolate bombs today. Um, this is the first time I've ever done something like this. So, um, and, and what I love about Thermomix is it kind of, it gives you the confidence in order to try new things. So I saw this on YouTube. Um, I saw someone on one of the community groups uh, for Thermomix doing a hot chocolate bomb and, and posted what the recipe is in order to, to do the chocolate. The great thing about Thermomix is it does a perfect tempered chocolate, which is the obviously the, the star ingredients of, of making a hot chocolate bomb. So let's let's begin. Um, I'm just using some lint chocolate, just what you can get in the grocery store. So I've just got some kind of creamy. Um, the recipe that I took off of the off of the community group, it did recommend kind of a mix of dark and milk chocolate. Um, but I've just got the milk chocolate. That's what we like in this household. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in um, 200 grams of the chocolate um, into the Thermomix and we're going to blitz it. Um, I'm going to blitz it so we can then start melting it. Just put it into the Thermomix, put my lid on and I'm going to grate the chocolate for eight seconds. And we're going to do it on speed 10, which is the fastest speed. Right, so I'm going to open that up and see how we went. Perfect. Oh, looks like I might have to do a little bit more. But I've still got some blocks of chocolate. Um, let's do it again. So I've got some clumps in here, I'll show you. I probably should have broken up more, to be honest. Um, but as I said, this is the first time, so I'm learning as I'm showing you. So there you can see the chocolate, a lot of it's blitz, but I, I need to do a little bit. So I'll do another eight seconds on speed 10. And hopefully that should do it. That'll be nine seconds. So that is actually, so that's all um, grated up. You can see there's kind of clumps of chocolate. The next part is we're gonna melt it. If you didn't have a thermal mix, you would probably be doing it in a bowl, in a water bath. Um, but here we can just do it straight in the thermal mix. Um, so we're gonna melt it. It's gonna be seven minutes. Seven minutes. Oh, we're gonna do um, temperature 50 degrees Celsius and speed two, and that'll give it a nice gentle stir. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna melt the chocolate for the seven minutes, and then um, we're gonna turn the heat off and do another seven minutes, um, same uh, speed two, but no heat, and that'll do the tempering. So we'll pause the video for, for a moment, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're in our last few seconds um, of melting the chocolate and you can <clears throat> really smell the melted chocolate in the air. So the thermos mix lets you know when it's done and it unlocks. Yeah, this looks delicious. Um, so let me show you what the melted chocolate looks like. So there we go. That looks delicious. Nice melted chocolate. You can see the consistency there. Nice. So now it says to do it another seven minutes to do the tempering and we're going to do it um, speed two but no temperature. So I'll just reset it, do the exact same thing as last time, seven minutes, speed two. And then when the, the chocolate is tempered I'll be using the silicone molds. Um, I just bought these from Amazon actually. Um, so really you can find them almost anywhere though, but yeah, definitely something easy to get and then it'll be easy so it can pop out. So we'll be back in a few minutes when the chocolate is tempered. 
Okay, so we're just in the last few seconds of the tempering of the chocolate now. Um, so, as I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. So let's hope, fingers crossed, this all works. So I'll show you what the chocolate looks like. So again, here's the chocolate. See the nice consistency here? So what we're going to do is we are going to put some chocolate in these molds and kind of line the molds with the chocolate. Now I've seen, now the only way I know how to do this is because I've been watching YouTube videos. So um, it does say for people, experts that have done this, so you kind of do it twice. So here we go, the most oozy, delicious looking chocolate. I'm going to put a little bit in and I'm actually going to use a spoon and line. I think I might need a little bit more. And the trick is, so I watched, is to make sure you have a nice even coating on each mold, no holes, and to let it set a little bit. So and also to make sure that we have enough around the edges as well, because the edges is where it's going to bind to the other side of its, of its sphere. So I think we need a, a little bit more right there. So there's one done. Do the next one. I might start with Maybe kind of two teaspoons of chocolate. My spheres are a little bit smaller than maybe what you've seen. Well, that might be a little bit much. I might put that in the next one. My, mine are a little bit smaller. But I actually think that's it's probably the perfect size. Because I actually find when they're larger, they're, they're kind of overpowering with the chocolate in, in your hot chocolate. Um, There we go. I just make sure I get the edges. Make sure there's no gaping holes. Keep on going. And I have no idea how many I'm going to end up with here. Um, the recipe that I took off of one of the other users um, in a Thermomix group, she said 400 grams of chocolate. I'm only doing 200. I didn't want to have an abundance of hot chocolate bombs. Um, but rather make them fresh, kind of when we're going to enjoy them. It's doing pretty good. And I think if any, if I have extra chocolate, I'm going to put it into um, kind of like a piping bag type of thing and drizzle it on the top and decorate it, right? So you kind of have that nice chocolate drizzle on the top. So, I think about that one good. I think I'm getting the hang of this. I think I know my quantities that I need. And as I said, that's what I, I do enjoy about Thermomix is that it does give you that confidence just to try new things. Like, so for us, it's Saturday afternoon right now. We're in the middle of a lockdown. And I bought these ingredients actually about two weeks ago when I was waiting for my molds to come. So this is a perfect Saturday afternoon in lockdown activity to enjoy the family for a nice uh, snack this afternoon. So that's what we're gonna do. What else? What else is it? Be? And it's cool out. There's some snow coming. So I think this should be good. So. My family has three people, so right now I'm perfect with uh, three of them here. Um, but looking at the amount of chocolate, I can probably make a few more, so I'll do that. Oh, actually, no, I've got to, I've got to do a double coating, so maybe I won't, actually. Um, let's see. Yeah, actually, I probably won't. I will make sure. We have the coating. So I'm told 
but you should let it set and then kind of do another layer so kind of like a double layer to make it a little bit thicker but i can see this is still kind of oozy so i think what we're going to do is i'm going to pause for a minute and i'll come back and i'll do the second coating um because i'm not sure how long this is going to take to set so i will let you know when i get back okay so I actually ended up sticking it in the fridge for a couple of minutes and here you can see it's starting to set. So I'm going to do my second coating, which is what a lot of the YouTubers are recommending. So I'll probably put a little bit less for the second coat, so maybe just like one teaspoon. I can feel the texture of the first layer when I'm doing this and it has, it's, it's a bit soft, so it hasn't set completely. but it's not fully set. So I kind of let it sit out um, for a couple of minutes and I saw it was still kind of wet looking and I wasn't sure how long it was going to take to solidify. So I decided to whack it in the fridge for a couple of minutes and that's where you can see it kind of solidified a bit better. So we'll see if this technique works when it comes to getting them out of the molds. And the reason why it's recommended to do it two times is kind of to give it a little bit of a thicker coating, kind of gives it a little bit more integrity when we're um, trying to combine them. Um, so, and it's actually interesting. I looked at a couple of ways of how to combine them and uh, there was a woman, she actually Put a plate on her stove top which i am not going to do i have an induction uh, cooktop not doing that um, another woman she uh, used a frying pan so you use the frying pan and you kind of just put the the edges of, of your half sphere um, onto the warmed frying pan same as you would have with the plate um, just to kind of melt the edges a bit and then you kind of put them together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use um, my frying pan. I'm going to warm it up while I'm waiting for this to set. And um, I'll melt the edges and put them together. Um, I'm also going to assemble them. I mean, so the fun part, and this is where you can kind of make this into a family activity. Get your kids to help they can actually help with the tempering of the chocolate they probably think it's quite cool using the thermal mix and everything um you can get them to help you kind of fill the the insides so we're going to do um, hot chocolate obviously um, some marshmallows and some crushed up smarties because we have an abundance in this house of smarties so it's a good use of them so there's my second layer um i am going to throw this back into the fridge um I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes, see see how it looks after 10 minutes. Um, and if it needs longer, I'll let you know, okay? Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes actually in the fridge. So here's my chocolate molds. Um, so they've just come out of the fridge. I actually have the frying pan on behind me. I just kind of blasted it up high and now it's just kind of on a low temperature. Um, I am going to try to get these out without breaking them. Because it's silicon, it should just pop out. There's my first one. Jeez. <laughs> There's my second. That just popped right out. And I can see my edges are a little bit thin. So it should be interesting when we try to bind them. I can see that my edges are a lot thinner than kind of like the middle. This one's not perfect, but that's okay. That's the charm with homemade, right? No, it's not always perfect, but it tastes good and it's exactly how you want it. Um, let's take this one out. Yeah, this one's crumbling. Okay, there you 
see the edges. For some reason, it just didn't take as much on the edges, which I was trying to do, but I guess with the chocolate, this kept on um, pooling at the, at the bottom of the mold. So, lesson learned. Need to do it a bit better next time, that one. Not perfect either, but that's okay. Cheated a little bit. I actually do have one extra one in the fridge, so I might have to go to that one. Some of these are not. Yeah, see how that's crumbled a little bit. What I might do is I might get my back up. So I will just put this off to the side, grab my extra. I had a little bit more chocolate than I thought, so when I was off camera, I actually did an extra one as the tester. But, oh yeah, so this one's actually a little bit better. It's probably not the greatest. Okay, so let's see how this works. So now what we're gonna do, turn off my, I've got my hot pan. And what I'm gonna do, pick my best ones first. I hope this works. Just gonna touch it. I'm gonna put some hot chocolate in, a few marshmallows, some sprinkles. It's melting in my hand actually. Um, let's try this one. Let's do a little tap. Put it together. Let's hope that it kind of merges together. <laughs> And that was my best one. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. Tap. Put some chocolate in. Get some marshmallows. Get some Smarties. Put it down so it doesn't melt in my hands. Let's see, which one should I try? This one maybe. It's quite, this one's quite thin. Just tap. Merge it together, and let's hope that solidifies together. Let's try this one that's a little bit thin too on the edges. I don't know, I guess next time I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more diligent on making sure the edges towards the top are good. Put some Smarties in. Hmm, maybe I'll try this one. Oh, that one feels soft. Let's try this one. I guess this one will be mine. There we go. Put it on the top. Yeah, this one. It's a little bit. Okay. Well, you know what? Homemade always has its charm. So that's fine. We can still do the decorating. And you know what? When it's in your mug, it doesn't matter, right? Maybe I won't hold it as long because it was kind of melting in my hands a bit. Let's put a little bit of the hot chocolate in, a couple of the marshmallows, a little bit of the Smarty. <laughs> this one should be very interesting. Okay, then we'll just let it set. Now, for decorating, actually, I might pause for a second so I can wash my hands. Okay, hands are clean. Um, now I'm gonna try to dress them. Um, just a little bit of decoration. This was the leftover um, chocolate that I had um, that I melted and I just put it into this um, like kind of like piping tool um, before it solidified. So I'm gonna try to drizzle it over the top and then probably sprinkle some more of my Smarties because I just have some. So again, let's hope this works. Sprinkle my drizzle. It has solidified, I think. Let's see. It's gonna come out the top. Um, no, I don't. Maybe, maybe it's too solid. 
Okay, so we paused for a second. I just ran this under some hot water, actually. So now I've got the chocolate drizzle. I'm just gonna put a few little drizzle marks. It is coming out quite slowly, but it is coming out. So maybe I'll do an A. Nope. I'm just gonna be happy if I get some drizzle. There we go. An H for homemade. How about that? Just some random design. Maybe I'll do this one more of a swirl. It's starting to come out of the top a bit. Um, okay. So I think that's probably all we can do. Before that dries, I'm just going to put a little bit of drizzle on it. One of them won't have any. My husband said he doesn't want any drizzle, so if he doesn't get drizzle, that's fine. So I'll put that down. It's a little bit of a mess. Um, let's grab a paper towel. So another thing that I, I learned when I was watching some of these YouTube videos is kind of how to set it. So this is just a muffin tin upside down, and I just put some muffin liners. Um, now, when it's done, I'm just going to... I might just let it dry for a few minutes, let it solidify again. I think it'll be fine actually. Put it in its little muffin wrapper. Now it's feeling soft. I think it actually needs, to... well, maybe I'll do this and I'll stick it back in the fridge. That's probably what I'll do. Nothing like doing this on the fly, <laughs> figuring out what works best. So, clean my hands. I'll try to lift this up to camera so you can see it. So here we go. Here's my homemade chocolate bombs. Here we go. Homemade chocolate bombs. So I'll, I'm probably going to stick this back into the fridge. Let's let it solidify a little bit more and then we're going to enjoy it probably in about a half an hour. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, let me know if you, if you try the recipe and um, follow me on my YouTube channel at Kimix Canada. Um, or if you have any questions, you can send me an email. It's kimixcanada at gmail.com. Thanks a lot and I hope you have a good day. Bye. Okay, I'm back. And I just realized I probably want to show you the best part, which is actually having the hot chocolate. So one of the, and I can also, it's an opportunity to show you one of the functions that we have um, on the Thermomix. So on the Thermomix, you, you swipe to the left and there is a kettle function. And the kettle function is great because you can actually warm your water or your milk to an exact temperature. So you know when you have a kettle and you know it might be too hot or that type of thing. And I'm making this for my son, so I probably don't want it too, too hot. We did this a few weeks ago and I think we did about 85 degrees. It was about perfect. So I'm just gonna put in, this is just a cup of milk pour a cup of milk inside. I'm going to set my temperature to 85. Hit the kettle pump. Oh, I put my lid on. Whoops. <laughs> you would have told me to do that. Um, put my lid on, 85 degrees. Hit the kettle um, pitcher and then just turn the dial. So what this will do now is it'll just heat it till it, it reaches 85 degrees Celsius and then it'll alert me when it's done. So we'll pause for now, and then when we're back, we'll be able to show you the, the actual bomb. Okay, so we're back. Our milk is warm. It's 85 degrees, Spence. Are you ready? Okay, so the first thing, which, which hot chocolate bomb would you like? The middle. The middle one? Okay, so we're going to pick the middle one, and we're going to put it into our cup. Here we go. And let's get the milk. So the milk is nice and warm. Let's see the magic. I don't know, camera, can we can we see what's going on? There we go. Oh, there. So 
got the bomb. Now, Spencer, would you like to add anything? Which Would you like some extra marshmallows or some extra hot chocolate? Some extra marshmallows, thank you. Excellent. And what about, you want some extra Smarties? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's put in some extra Smarties. There we go. What do you think, Spence? Great. There we go, nice and chocolatey. I don't know, it might be a little bit warm. I see some steam coming out, but it looks delicious, doesn't it? Yeah. So here we go. Turn the camera off, hot chocolate bomb. You ready? Hot. <laughs> All right. Again, if you want to follow me, it's Kimix uh, Canada and uh, KimixCanada at gmail.com. Thanks and have a good day.